how to do Wilcox's and Rudd's sum. That's from last time. As you can see, we have the Wilcox dot test, which we use for sine run. Yes. Now, I'm going to arbitrarily generate a sample, R norm of 10. It'll create 10 random numbers. Um, I'm going to use identical sample sizes and I'm going to include a shift of eight. That is a significant shift, right? Um, Wilcox dot test x comma y. Again, it comes down to how you define y and x. We are going to stick with y minus x. Um, Hard equals false. Good. That's what I get. You can see the p value is extremely small. In other words, the shift is reasonably large. Now, the same problem if I make the shift sort of small, let's say I just make it 0.1. Statistically, um, are x and y the same? Well, we will see. They are. Right? No difference between x and y because the p value is 0 0.6305. Does that make sense? So in this case, and you can see w is 43. Good. Um, so that statistic is the Wilcoxon rank sum statistic. If I put pad equals true, I would get the sign rank test. If I put it false, Wilcoxon rank sum test. Um, P sign rank was used to find the critical value, excuse me, P value for sign rank. Here, and Q sign rank was used to find the critical values. Here it is, damn it. Frozen, okay, there. Q Wilcox. We have to specify the probability, uh, let's say 0.05. It is the area below the critical value. Last time it just asked for N because par data. Here, M and N, they can't be different. Let's say six and three. That is the critical value on the left hand side. If you put point, that will be on the right hand side. Does that make sense? Um, now, where was I? Uh, the p value let's just say five test statistic six three it is always going to give you the lower tail the p value there is 0 0.1907 okay um so the only way to do or find p values is using r i will create a table for um, the critical values now, earlier I said it really doesn't matter whether you use the sum of x's or the sum of the y's, the ranks of x's, ranks of y's. Hypothetically speaking, you know, we're going to stick with, you know, summing the ranks of y's. But hypothetically speaking, if I instead summed the ranks of x's, what will change here? What? The N and M will switch, right? Instead of N, Y1 all the way up to YN, now you would have X1 all the way up to XM. So M there, switch doesn't matter, same thing. Switch M and M, M and M, M and N, um, it's not going to matter. Does that make sense? Which is why it really doesn't matter whether you fit X or Y. Good. We're going to stick with um, Y and we're going to stick 
define the change as y minus x. Any questions? No? 